So guys, welcome to the first episode of the PowerCast. Today we got Jace. I think whoever's into whoever's listening to this will know who he is. I don't need to introduce him. I don't need to introduce him. Look, I don't need to introduce him. Keep that in. That sounded quite offensive. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so today we are going to talk about how an average nine to five person can go into the fields of online coaching. Where do we actually start? So guys, I'm going to kick off by asking Jace a direct question, okay? Imagine I am someone who's got a 9 to 5 job, so I want to start online coaching because I want to make money out of fitness, I want to be independent, and basically, long story short, I want to go to Dubai like he does. I want to go to these uh, restaurants and start cutting steak. So where do I actually start? Like, bro, like, I want to start. Okay, tell me what to do right now. How can I start? So I always say if you're currently working full time, there's a few things you have to look at. You need to sort of set the goal. Um, you know, this is if you're going to leave a job of how much you need to earn and then sort of reverse engineer your way backwards from that goal. So say, for example, you're earning two and a half thousand pounds a month. You need to break down how you're going to get that from fitness. So that's obviously going to break down how much you're going to charge per client um, and how many clients you actually need to leave your job. And I'm actually speaking to a young lad now called Michael Philippa, and he works in account and probably makes about £3,000 per month, and he wants to leave his job, and he's like, Jace, you know what, I'm nearly there. I've nearly got X amount of clients to make that, but we need to remember with the online coaching, there's no security. So I did say to him, if you lose five clients, you're then in the negative. So you have to sort of plan how much you need and also a buffer in case clients do fall off. Because in this game, it might be one out, one in client. It might be five out and then two in. So you can be at a negative very quickly. So you do need to factor that in mind. But I always say is work out how much you need and a buffer and then reverse engineer your way sort of to that goal. Bro, I hear that, but I'm going to be blunt with you, right? I first signed up with Jake when he was 50 quid a month, right? I have seen you come from the bottom. Bro, forget all this, uh, start here, start. Bro, I want to know, okay, how can I get start making that money? How do I get that clients? I understand the maths behind it, bro. But listen, I just want to make that money. Where do I start? Tell me what to do right now. When I finish this interview, how can I go about getting up to five grand a month? So it's not the easiest way because it's never easy. So what I would say, if you want to really jump in the deep end one you've got to sort of prioritize a lot of time into sort of getting results as much as you know a lot of people now there's marketing it's a results driven business and i always say my business model as much as there's real as xyz it's always back you know, on my page there's results so naturally that's your usp that's your selling point so i'd go away i'd make sure you've got a bundle of results obviously you've helped people over the years so i'd archive all the results so you can showcase them Secondly, I'd create a brand. You know, people, a lot of people say to me, I want to sell online coaching. I say, show me your brand, show me your documents, and they haven't got any. I'm like, you haven't got a package ready to sell. So I'd box up a package, have a package ready to sell. And then on the back of that, market yourself. Market yourself, you know, it's not about, and I always say to guys, it's not about you being in shape. It's about what you can do for other people. And, you know, a lot of guys say to me, I want an online coach. I look at their Instagram and I say, it's a picture of you, 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 and you. You know, your, your Instagram that, it's a shop front, it's an Argos catalogue. You need to, someone needs to be able to look at it and say, this guy can help me because he's helped that person. So what I would do is get a brand um, and then I'd literally, you know, add as much value as you can and showcase some results and show people how you can actually help them. Okay, so let's say now I've gone away, I've created a brand. Might not be the best brand because I'm using apps like Canva because I don't want to spend too much money. So I've created a brand now. It, it's called Uncle Fab's Online Coaching. So now, how do I attract? Okay, you said create a package. What's in this package? You told me about package, but I don't know what this package means. So package is what, what do you offer? What what comes in Uncle Fabs's package? What is it? Is it is it diet? How is the diet presented? How is my check-in? Is it feedback? Is it voice note? Is it phone calls? Is it video? So what are you sort of putting together for this client? What are you presenting in front of them? And that's your package. And everyone's package is different. You know, I didn't use to loom, now I loom, you know. But again, I understand if I loom, it, it, it's more time. So it has to be down to what you want to do. Obviously, there's apps, kahunas. There's, so, so, you know, you need to box up your offer and it has to entice it. People have to be interested in it. So it's you have to have an offer before you even think about online coaching. And one is your offer affordable. Does your offer sort of suit your niche who you want to work with? So how do I create a niche? How do I attract my first five clients that will bring me the transformation which you said to me is what people need to see to buy into me so how do i get those five first five well clients? firstly you need to cre you create your niche 
you know if i wanted to work with solely bodybuilders when you look at my instagram i'm just going to be talking about bodybuilders if you want to work with lifestyle guys so say for example in this studio now there's guys that come here that work high pressure jobs they come here after they get in shape so i would be if i was you marketing to guys over 30 who work normal jobs and still want to get in shape your content's got aligned to that because that now that's your niche when someone goes on your page they're going to see Fab's put out that message, he's put out that message, he's put out that message. That resonates and they start to connect with you. If you start talking about that for three weeks and then talking about bodybuilding, they're now going to switch off because your message isn't consistent. So your content creates your niche. And then you being consistent with your message is your deed of trust. Then once you've got your deed of trust backed with results, someone's most likely going to buy into you as a brand because they believe in your product. Okay. Do you think I should start... Guys, there's a reason why I'm asking all these questions, by the way. So I'm going to get to that at the end of the end of this uh, little podcast. So do you think I, I could, should start with like a monetary offer, like one month free? Or do you think that devalues my brand and people are like, mm, why is he giving out offers? So it goes in, in, in two ways. Obviously, there's offers that can get people through the door. And sometimes you have to give to gain. Mm. Um, and that might be giving that month free to gain a client to get that end result. And sometimes, you know, when you're starting out, you have to do that. Because that end result's probably worth more than that monthly subscription that you're giving out for free. Because with that end result, you might get a testimonial from that client. You've then got an end result. You can get a referral from the client. So there's much more that outweigh that. So I'm not a, against that when someone's starting out. 100% not, not against that. Do you think I should offer five clients free coaching to get those results? Would that be worth my while doing so? Sometimes it's worth your while, but sometimes people don't take things serious unless they've departed with cash. So it is, it is a, it's a, it's a catch on you too. If it's five driven individuals, you know, different rather than the guy who just about goes to the gym, he's not going to value something. When you don't put money to things, sometimes you don't value them. Yeah, it makes sense. So how long has, how long would you say, I know it's going to be a, how long is a piece of string, you know. but how long would you say I can start making 60 grand a year, which is 5k a month, how long would you think it would start, take me from start, who's never been into online coaching, to get to, from your personal experience, from the people you've mentored, would it take me to get to 60 grand a year? Being very realistic, if we're talking about you with your credibility in the fitness industry, we have to remember you've got credible values in the industry that people trust. It's very different to someone who's just left a job. So from that perspective, I genuinely, wholeheartedly, I'm not selling any services. I believe it can be done in nine to 12 months at the right push with the right direction, with the right formula, with the right content strategy, with the right marketing strategy behind it, along with results and referrals and X, Y, Z. I think if you've got credibility in the industry, I believe genuinely you can be in a very different position in nine to 12 months. Okay. So another question, how do I... When we think about it, 5K a month, it depends. You could, you could, it depends what you're going to charge. Yeah, that's very true. So here's a question for you. A lot of people watching this will be bodybuilders. What do I do to become one of the best bodybuilding coaches like yourself? You got Martin Winston, you got Rob LRF, you got Cuba, you got a lot of these guys. How do I compete with those top names? How do I charge 300 pounds a month? I actually say don't try and compete with that. And I'm very fortunate because people don't realize my brand's actually 65% elite lifestyle. More elite lifestyle is lifestyle guys that are very committed so and a lot of these guys that you work that you see they've actually got a, a good lifestyle brand behind the bodybuilding um as well and i say when someone's coming into it and they say they want to be the best bodybuilding coach i say if it's passion absolutely um but if you're looking for a stable income and you're looking you know for a career change i say shoot to the lifestyle because the bodybuilding pool of clients is this big the lifestyle pool of clients is this big so if you want to build that brand to 60 grand a year, it's probably best to shoot for the lifestyle clients because the bodybuilders are already invested with names and it takes longer to sort of obtain that income from solely focusing on bodybuilders. Because I see a lot of guys that are bodybuilders itself, I want to be the best bodybuilding coach. I want to only mark, you'll see all my posts, I talk about elite lifestyle and then bodybuilding because my bread and butter is elite lifestyle, then bodybuilding is my passion, which I'm very fortunate I can make an income off my passion. So when someone says, you know, they want to get into this and they want to coach bodybuilders, I say, you know what, let's start with the lifestyle because there's much more lifestyle clients. Like how many bodybuilders walk into your shop compared to lifestyle people? So I always say market to the masses. Again, if you're looking, oh, I want a career change, market to the masses rather than focusing on just the bodybuilders. So again, going back to what you said, going way back about content, because now I'm thinking, what can I do at the end of this interview to go, go away and 
progress my online coaching. So going back to it, what kind of content do you think would attract people? Would it be training videos? Would it be healthy cooking? Would it be, I don't know, like tips, hints, supplement advice? What do you think as an average person, per, a tr average nine to five person trying to break into the film, what sort of content should they put out that you found from your experience that would be the quickest of grabbing attention? The, the quickest content I'd say put out is added value. So it's it's no, there's no benefit of you just putting you doing a bench press out. It's, it's irrelevant, but is it adding value? Are you giving tips? Are you letting people know how to perform it optimally? Are you letting people know why bench press over the Smith machine? So I would say adding value. And I always say to everyone who starts coaching, look at the pillars of your company and you know, your brand will have pillars where it might be. So for example, mine's going to be elite results, transformations, training advice. So look at that. And I would say delve into each of them because you actually don't know what your audience want to see unless you trial and battle test all the different types of content. You know what, that worked, that got great engagement. So we're probably going to dive down that rabbit hole. But I would say diversify 25% energy into each of them until you find what works for you and your target audience. So let's say, just trying to give people some ideas. So let's say you would say, like, for example, a post on a pre-workout meal. What's optimal to you as a pre-workout? Uh, what best exercise targets your outer tricep? Yeah, and like, yeah, I would say nutrition and advice around your training is always going to be good because a lot of people are not understanding about why we might use higher carbohydrates or like around training sort of top movements for delts again traditionally a lot of people just know side raises or now nowadays again advanced there's cable raises cuff raises there's many different movements so when you look at your target audience tony that works in jp morgan that you know trains at virgin active he may not know that so we're marketing to him we're not marketing to our friend bolo or people that are advanced we have to even when i do content now i remove myself from my body and say mm -hmm. what does my like genuinely how i make my content now i would write dave on a whiteboard and i'd say what does dave doesn't know and i'd list 10 things what dave doesn't know that's my content so i think that has been actually a very very key i think this is what narrowed it down if you take something away from this little podcast, it would be that last point Jace just said. To me, I took her down and I thought, you know what, that makes clear sense. Identify your target market, write down what he wants. So that... Yeah, point. always write down what he wants, write down what he doesn't know, and it, that's your niche, because that's who you're marketing to. And a lot of guys, you know, say, for example, I've got, guy, I, I've got guys that I've helped, they've just started coaching, their niche is lifestyle, and they're talking about why you know, triglycerides, glycosides, and you know, why this pre-workout pump formula is amazing, but your target audience is going over their head and sometimes your target audience will look and say, this guy's probably too advanced for me. And you're actually scaring off your custom. So I'd say, you know, keep things simplified and just think about what does your target, I, even now I do it, I write, I did it this morning. You know, when I wanted to talk, because I do, if you realize I do six months of lifestyle posts and now I'm like, oh, bodybuilding, so I'm like, I'm talking about diuretics and da 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 da. So, I'm creating that niche what I want for six months. And then when the bodybuilding season's done, I go back to lifestyle. So I'm constantly maneuvering that content based on what I think my target audience want to see. So guys, I'll tell you the reason why we touched on this topic today. So Jace does a lot of mentoring. So I've actually signed up with him. So I spoke to him, I said, Jace, listen, I think a lot of people would benefit. To having our Zoom, uh, Zoom meetings with him, I found the information he gave me was very valuable. So this is the reason I thought, you know what, let's give some added value to people who are watching. So this is the main reason, the purpose behind this little podcast. So hopefully you took something away. And if you do want to sign up with Jace, uh, book in a Zoom call with him, which I did. I had to book online. I can't even text him and say, bro, can we talk? <laughs> I said, get on a Zoom link. <laughs> get on a Zoom. And then I don't know how much he charges. He hasn't sent me in my yearly bill yet. But I'll ask him how much he charges. He'll let you know. So last thing I'm going to touch on quickly before we finish is how do you, how does, someone in the bodybuilding industry get sponsored. Yeah, I know you get a lot of freebies. <laughs> so I know, I know you get paid from some brands as well, and I get it, why? But how do I, as an avid bodybuilder, go about to attract some of these brands? Genuinely, I've never looked for a sponsor and I've never asked for a sponsor. And that is the best way, you know, I know sponsor companies personally and they, they don't appreciate when you message, hey bro, I'm looking for a sponsor. Um, because I actually know a scenario, I'll get into it now is, my friend owns a, a supplement company and he had someone message and say, hey bro, I really love your products and you know, I buy your products all the time, I'm looking for a sponsor. He said, great, what's your name? He said the name, he typed in his database, he said, you've not ordered from me in three months. 
So again, <laughs> you know, business owners are aware when you're saying, you know what, I appreciate all your product. They, they know who's buying into their brand. They know who's buying into their product. And that sometimes some brands naturally, you know, chosen few. I was promoting chosen few before I was even sponsored. So luckily now I am sponsored. Before I was sponsored, I was posting chosen few. And, and that naturally they saw traction. They saw people buying it. I had a small discount code that I wasn't getting any payment from. And now I do. They saw people buying it and that was me promoting it. So I would always say is the worst thing you can do is message someone. You've had it. But hey, bro, can I get a sponsor? It's the worst thing you can do. Because naturally in life, if you do things out of good gesture, good things are going to come off the back of it. So I've never actually looked for a sponsor, a protein sponsor again. Naturally, if people can see you're credible, not an influencer, um, but people see you're credible, you've got a large following, you've got people following, you've got people commenting, you've got people buying into you and your word is deed of trust and naturally you have a bit of authority in the industry, companies are going to see that and, and sort of approach you. So long story short, basically you can't do nothing. Uh, you just got to carry on doing what you're doing. Takes you a good couple of years, build up a trust. Uh... You'll be recognised when the time's right. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, when I was young, I used to message everyone, yeah, man, let me wear that T-shirt. But you'd be recognised when the time's right. And naturally, if you keep doing what you're doing, other brands will see it and they'll catch wind. And that's sort of how you'll get multiple brands reaching out to you. Guys, hope that helps. Uh, if you do like the content we're creating, so I'm creating a lot more. I'll, I'll be doing a lot more in interviews with, and podcasts with people that will actually benefit you rather than just talking for the sake of talking. My main theory and idea behind this podcast is how an average person can actually make a living out of being into fitness and bodybuilding and how you can progress in this industry rather than just talking about generic supplements and all kinds of random. What's the best diet way? <laughs> What's the best diet way? Yes, yeah, like added value. Ranch outside from it. So guys, thank you for listening. If you made it all the way through to the end, well done. So the reason behind this podcast I started is I wanted to give something back to the people about how the theory behind and the idea behind it is how people in the fitness industry can actually make a living out of the love of bodybuilding and fitness. Uh, one of the main and easiest way, I say easiest, is probably online coaching. But I have a lot more topics coming up, a lot more people in from the industry who actually make a living out of the love and bodybuilding so I'm basically the idea is to try to learn from them and see what we can do and implement that into our lives so that is the whole purpose and like I said if you want to do one Jace to help you with anything just hit him up I'm actually full <laughs> but I say that because I'm a very straight shooter and you know I can only give the time to the guys I got so I am full but if you are interested there will be a waiting list I'll take you on half price <laughs> thank you for watching